Hello curious learners, this is Mr. Buffington and today we are going to be multiplying monomials and binomials. To do this we are going to need to have background information on what a monomial, monomial and binomial are and also to review, hopefully you've watched the lesson on multiplying by, uh, monomials times monomials because um, that's going to be some background information that you will need to know how to do moving forward. So let's get into today's lesson where we will take monomials and multiply them by times of binomials. First off, a quick review. Monomials are single terms. They can include numbers, they can include numbers and variables, or they can include a combination. You see two examples of monomials there, 3a and negative 15. And then over on the right side, I've given examples of a binomial. A binomial means two monomials. So you can see that the examples look very similar. A binomial has two monomials connected by addition or subtraction. And the monomials are single terms with a variable, a number, or a combination of a variable and a number. All right. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we are actually going to be multiplying monomial times binomial. And this is how we do it. Here's our question. 3x times 9x plus 2. So the binomial 9x plus 2 is inside of the parentheses. The monomial 3x is outside of the parentheses and that means we are going to need to use what we call the distributive property. The distributive property is the property that says when you're multiplying you take what's outside the parentheses and you distribute it or you multiply it times everything inside the parentheses. So you have to multiply it times each term. So it's going to look a little bit like this. 3x times 9x and 3x times 2. Notice that they are separated by addition. That's very important. So you're not multiplying all of it together, but you're multiplying 3x times the first term and then 3x times the second term. <clears throat> this is what you'll end up with. 3 times 9 is 27. x times x is x squared. So our first term is 27x squared. 3x times 2 is 3 times 2 is 6, and the variable remains the same. So this is how we're going to multiply using the distributive property to multiply a monomial times a binomial. Now, I want to show you something um, that to show that this actually does work. So we're going to show you the distributive property over here on the left. And I'll just use numbers because numbers make a little bit more sense to everyone. So here is a question. 5 times 2 plus 3. I'm going to use the distributive property just to show you that it actually works. 5 times 2 is setting up there. And we're adding that to 5 times 3 see the same exact process as what we did with the, the monomial times a binomial. So we end up with 5 times 2 is 10, 50, 5 times 3 is 15, 10 plus 15. That's what we end up with over here. Usually you'd leave that as a binomial, but because they're numbers we can join them together. 10 plus 15 is 25. Now let's solve that same exact question using order of operations just to see that it gives you the same answer. This is just to see that the distributive property does work. It's kind of like we call this a proof. Just make sure that you know that it works. So let's go ahead and do it. With the order of operations, first you'd add those numbers together, right? 2 plus 3 gives you 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. So you can see that it does give you the same answer. So that's important for us to note that using the distributive property gives us the right answer. The reason we need to use the distributive property is because we have binomials like 3b minus 8 in this question that can't be joined together using order of operations. We can't just add them or subtract them together. So we have to use the distributive property. All right, so it is practice time. Time for you to go ahead and solve this question. Pause the recording, choose your answer, and then watch through as I give you the full solution. 
we're going to use the distributive property negative 2a times 3b and negative 2a times negative 8. That will look like this. Notice how I've set up a lot of parentheses around that negative 2 times negative 8 just to try and keep things clear. And I'm separating them by addition. Negative 2a times 3b gives me negative 6ab. Notice the numbers are multiplied and the variables are joined together. In our second one, I have negative 2a times negative 8. Negative times a negative gives me a positive 16a, and that's my final solution. So you should have been able to get that negative 6a plus 16a, or negative 6ab, I'm sorry, plus 16a. Try another one. Again, an opportunity for you to go ahead and solve this. So you will solve 12g times 2h minus 4j. When we solve this, we're going to use the distributive property, and I'm going to show you a new way of doing it, um, a way that I actually do it so it saves me a little bit of writing. So I'll go ahead and actually solve them as I go. 12g times 2h. And then I just write it down. So instead of writing it all out, 12g times 2h, I actually just do that math right away. 12 times 2 is 24. g times h is gh. There we go. Then I do the second one, 12g times negative 4j. 12 times negative 4 gives me negative 48. g times j gives me gj. There we go. Good job, right? Isn't that one of those things you type into text? GJ, good job. So that's how I solve these. I actually skip that middle step that we were doing in the previous two examples, or th previous three examples, I guess. Um, I skip that middle step where I write it all out, 12G times 2H, because I can do all of that um, in my head because I've been practicing this a lot. If you still need that second step, by all means, um, include it, absolutely. Um, but if you can skip that second step and just write it out like this, it might save you a little bit of time. So here's a question where you can try this new method. Try it out. Negative 3y times 6z minus 5. Again, with the new method, I'm going to multiply negative 3 times 6 and get negative 18. And y times z gives me yz. I'm just going to write it down. You know, I'm not going to write out the whole step of, of multiplying. Next, I'm going to multiply that binomial negative 3y times the second term, negative 5. Negative times a negative gives me a positive. 3 times 5 is 15. y remains. Was this able to save you some time? I hope it was. Um, using this method is a little bit quicker, especially when we get larger numbers. It saves writing it out in a huge long string of multiplication. For our last question today, the question's a little bit more complicated. Two, negative 2x squared times 10xy minus 9y squared. Again, go ahead and pause that, solve the question, and then come back to see the fully explained response. Let's use that distributive property, negative 2x squared times 10xy. This one here is um, kind of challenging. We have to remember, first you multiply the numbers, negative 2 times 10 gives you negative 20, and you add the exponents x squared times x gives you x to the power of 3 and then we don't have we can't forget that y that's on the end of 10xy so that would be our full term the new term after multiplying then we multiply negative 2x squared times negative 9y squared and that's going to give us negative times a negative is a positive 2 times 9 is 18 and then x squared times y squared is x squared y squared. So that'll be the final term on the end there. So a couple of things to remember. 
multiply the numbers. Remember the rules for multiplying, positives and negatives, and just multiply those numbers. Join together the variables. If it's A times B, just put them together, A, B. And if the variables are the same, make sure to add those exponents. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Curious learners, you have a wonderful day.